Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Ben Hollingshead and Eric Tyke Miller. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to the Wasteland 3 Beta as we continue, and hopefully conclude, our exploration of downtown Colorado Springs. Honestly, uh, I have to say, the maps do seem a little smaller than they were back in Wasteland 2, but I've actually been pretty impressed with the level of content density the beta's been throwing at us. It always feels like there's something for us to do. Let's get back to it. fine automobiles for our personal use? Don't get cute. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I didn't know they existed until my pa told me to go down to this old man's farm. He said he had a few cars we could take. What we didn't expect was 50 VWs in his garden, hanging around like shrubbery in a rich man's home. Damn waste of some good cars, but... I have never heard of that. But I'll take your word on it. Can't wait until it's my turn to get behind the wheel. An Arapaho convoy truck is undergoing repairs. When you carry goods across Saul of Colorado, you're bound to take some damage. Make sure you take care of that bike when you get to it. That rust trap? Why? Because this was Jimmy Longhall's first car. When it gave up the ghost in the plains, he salvaged what he could, turned it into this monster you see before you. All because he couldn't bear to be separated from his machine. That's dedication for you. Also to get out of the planes. You all forgot that part. Even in his old age, this man is impressive. Broad-shouldered and thick-necked. He wears his hair in thick, white braids. Hey, Jimmy. Glad to see you're okay. Dorsey's didn't get this far? Yeah, they didn't bother with us. They were after folks wearing badges like yours. I would have shot those Dorseys dead if they'd walked in my garage. Haven't seen your friends before. If you folks are looking for help with your vehicle, you've come to the right place. What is this place? This is the Colorado Springs Arapaho Station. We got stations all over Colorado mostly for fixing and supplying our own fleet. But we fix vehicles and sell parts to anybody. I'm the manager, Jimmy Longhall. That's my crew over there. You need any repairs or alterations to your ride, they're the ones who will put it all together. Best crew in the business. Looks like you also repair people. Yeah. Oh, that's Doc Parker. He needed a place to set up his clinic, and we had the space, so... Good thing, too. Those Dorseys hurt a lot of people with that little raid of theirs. We brought as many as we could in here, and Doc's been patching them up as fast as he can. Only got two hands, though. Is Parker a good doctor? The best in Colorado Springs, no lie. He was the Patriarch's personal physician for a while. Took care of all the hoity-toits in Broadmoor Heights, too. Kind of pissed us off at the time, actually. Nice Arapaho boy taking care of the hemorrhoids of the hundred families and turning his back on his own people. Came home in the end, though. Remembered who he was and set up his clinic here. Been serving the working people of Colorado Springs ever since. And now he works for us. What can you tell us about your employees? Co-workers, not employees. I only give the orders because I take the orders, get me? Anyway, Fastback's the old one. 
Been with the station almost as long as I have. Ranch, the tall fella, thinks he's a heartbreaker, but he's the most sentimental sap you'll ever meet. And Pacer is our newest recruit. Don't mess with her. She's ten pounds of attitude in a five-pound bag. So, uh, are you all Arapaho here? At the moment? Yeah, I guess so. Driving and wrenching has kind of become the Arapaho brand. We pride ourselves on being the best mechanics and couriers in the West. What can you tell us about the Arapaho? Well, except for those of us who run the stations, we mostly live on the road. The people of the convoy, some folks call us. And we've turned that way of life into a business. Arapaho service stations, Iron Thunder logistics, Arapaho caravan protection, and so on. While other folks were eating each other in the suburbs or fighting over mansions in Broadmoor Heights, we kept to the wildlands and didn't come back until civilization had reestablished itself. And when we came back, we came with services people needed. Transportation, protection, and repair. Been living well ever since. Do you hire outsiders? Sure we do, if they're good enough. Takes a lot of skills to be better than an Arapaho, though. Hmm. What do you sell? Anything for your vehicle. Have a look. Okay, so Jimmy sells vehicle upgrades. Pretty limited selection, but we can't actually use most of this stuff in the beta anyway. Practically speaking, sure. Ain't no reason a good mechanic can't make talking cars out of dead robots. I hear a butt in there somewhere. You heard right. I wouldn't do it. Not unless the robot in question asked me themselves. Because it's just cruelty otherwise. That is actually pretty intriguing. I'm guessing that is how they're going to add uh, Morningstar to the game. That's the uh, artificially intelligent vehicle companion they added as one of the stretch goals. Oh, you want to talk to Mama? She's the one in charge. Okay. Grizzled and gnarled as an old oak tree, the round little woman scowls at you from under her scarf, eyes invisible in a face that is more wrinkles than skin. You got business with Mama Cotter? Uh, yes. No, you don't. Come back when you do. Until then, scram. Well, all right then. I'm guessing she's either quest-related or maybe she's the local fence or something. Hard to say. Got nothing to say to you. Talk to our mom. Well, I guess eating rats is better than eating folks. Barely. A lot of folks were shot down in the street. Marshals cleaned up most of the bodies already. Okay, moving on. Welcome to Mary Milk Teeth's Morning After Mart. If you did some things last night that you wish you hadn't, I got you covered. I can clean you up, sober you up, cure your ills, and get you ready to face the new day. Or maybe you got banged up in the Dorsey raid. I can help with that too. What do you need? What's your story? Just a simple humanitarian who saw a niche that needed filling. Now, are you buying or are you talking? What do you have for sale? 
remedies for regret, children. Headache pills, hair of the dog, pills for the pox, pills for the pain, and first aid kits for those of you who might have started something you couldn't finish. All guaranteed to fill you with pep and put a spring in your step. What can I get you? Sure, let's trade. Here you go, children. Salvation is at hand. Obviously, uh, Mary is the basic medical vendor. You can uh, restock your items here, but I think we're okay for now. I am tempted to grab a nitro spike, but we should really save our cash for ammo. She's also got an assortment of booze, which comes in various flavors and price points. But I believe it all has the same basic effect. We'll hold off on doing any shopping for now. Let's see what else we've got here. To Jesus, loaves and fishes, Christ! That's a bomb under my stall, ain't it? Oh, shit, Taiwan. God, it is. We best stay back. Hmm. God damn it! Where are the marshals? They've got their hands full licking their wounds. You're gonna be waiting a while. Back up slowly. Holy mackerel! Better stay back from my stall. Those goddamn dorses dropped a landmine under it. Well, if we were complete psychopaths, um, we could apparently trick Taiwan into blowing herself up, which I'm assuming would get us a small number of free guns at the cost of a perfectly good merchant. But since we are not psychopaths, can you uh, still sell us some gear? Heck no! That mine is right in front of my stock! All right, we'll see what we can do. Oh, thank God. You'd be doing me a shell of a favor. So, uh, that's just your thing, huh? I guess that's cool. The Saul Buchanan Colorado Heritage Museum seems closed for business. No entry by order of Sheriff Daisy. Jimmy Bob's still standing. Dorsey's or no Dorsey's. You think a little raid would stop snapping Jimmy Bob? No siree. Oh, hey. New faces? Let me know if you need to restock. I hear there's still some Dorsey's in the city. What's your story, Jimmy Bob? That snapping Jimmy Bob, thank you. Okay. What's your story? Snappin', Jimmy Bob. Not that much to tell. My dad was a traitor, and a good one. And now I'm a traitor, and a good one. Might seem boring to wandering muscle like yourself, but I like it. What's that contraption on the end of your stall? Oh, that's my prized possession. A genuine pre-apocalypse, fully functional microwave. I can cook up some truly gourmet delicacies with it. But the damn power got cut in the fight. It'll take the city weeks to fix it. I suppose we could take a look at that. Anyway, let's trade. Let's. Looks like Jimmy's got food items, a couple of smokables, and a small assortment of weapon mods. We might actually come back for some of those. Several of the stalls on Market Street were wrecked by the Dorseys, or Marshall Crossfire. 
All right, let's have a look at that microwave. <laughs> Not sure that's how that works, but okay. Ah, there's those thieves we saw. Shoot. We do want to take these guys out, but that cover is a bit too close for comfort. You know what? Let's um, just hedge our bets here. We've got a couple of rockets to spare. Okay. Time for talk, it's over. Looks like we uh, missed the guy in the back, but I think we'll be fine. Keep it together. Oh, uh, you'll notice because Retcon's our leader, the entire squad gets buffs when he takes down certain enemies. Might actually make him our sniper next time around, just to uh, make that easier to set up. Nice. I was hoping for more of a fight, but can't really complain. Sad banana. Sure. Spare handgun. Low tier shotgun. That might actually come in handy. Longway's not exactly a frontline fighter, but that will give him a little more versatility. Used cat litter. Oh, and a sack of cat bones, come on. Sans Lux. Sounds fancy. The intercom crackles, and a woman's voice addresses you. What's the matter with you? Don't you know the city's on lockdown? I'm not opening the door to nobody. Go away! Fair enough. Hmm. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, let's double back to that door we passed.
came here for every class trip we ever had. Is Buchanan a man? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Wesson. This display is inactive. That's a shame, but there's no shortage of things to look at. Artificial limbs and augmentations taken from the bodies of defeated Scar Collectors after the legendary Battle of Punkin Center, where the Patriarch defeated the savage warlords of the Eastern Plains once and for all. A can of baked beans from the bunker where the Patriarch's family waited out the deluge of fire. Canned food like this was all they had to eat. Unlike today, when the Patriarch has provided us with fresh, greenhouse-grown vegetables. The original and authentic treaty that united the hundred families, under the Patriarch's rule for the safety of the people of Colorado. Signed by the Patriarch himself, and representatives of each of the families. A replica of the rifle Sheriff Daisy used when she fought at the Patriarch's side during the War Against the Plains Gangs. For her bravery, heroism, and tactical brilliance, he appointed her Sheriff of Colorado Springs. Sounds like a terminal illness. Yeah, this whole place is a gloss. But who wants to hear all the ugly details? I don't know, Quan. There are some uh, drawbacks to raising people on propaganda. The sword of Neleus Dorsey, who led his clan in an attempted coup against the Patriarch. Neleus and the Dorseys were defeated after a treacherous attempt on the Patriarch's life. Now they are no more. Uniform of a soldier in the Monster Army, the gang that terrorized Colorado Springs until the Patriarch defeated them and won their fealty. The bullet holes and blood show the fierceness of the fighting. We've got some wires here. That might be how we power up the animatronics. Hmm... This animatronic figure is dressed like a marshal. Nothing about it is particularly distinctive, but you can hear some weird noise over your radio in this corner of the room. There's no sign of what might be causing it. Huh. Curiouser and curiouser. Well, I uh, suppose the obvious thing to do is repair that generator. Yeah, that just opens the door. You know, Miss Wesson, the marshals could always do with new blood. I thought you only took people who were... a bit more... Crooked-like. Huh. <laughs> we don't discriminate. Long as you can shoot and follow orders. Perhaps not, then. I can only do one of those things. Interesting. So even the uh, hundred families have their... suspicions about the marshals. Worm in formaldehyde. A jar of formaldehyde containing a large worm-like creature with a clawed tail and gaping mouth. A boldly designed label reads, Fetal Slide Rock Bolter? You decide. Huh. I know that's just a generic junk item, but... I wonder if rock bolters are a type of enemy we'll encounter later in the game. New Tor Introduction, 
Version 1. Play in case no staff is present. Greetings, visitors. My name is Junko Murayama, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Saul Buchanan Colorado Heritage Museum. You're about to embark on a journey through history as we share with you the people and events that made Colorado what it is today. Our new and improved animatronic exhibits will bring history to life as you learn about the rise of the patriarch, the unification of the hundred families, and their battles against the monster army and the plains gangs. The staff of the Colorado Heritage Museum asks that you do not interact with the exhibits. Ready? Let's go! Ah, nice. M1911. This pre-war design is a favorite of collectors and John Wuzo fans. <laughs> Not too shabby. Okay, so the M1911 is obviously a step up from our current starter pistol, but you'll notice we don't meet the requirements for the small arm skill. That doesn't mean we can't actually equip it, it just means we'll suffer cumulative penalties for every point below that requirement we are. Yeah, that's not too bad. But we uh, are just one point short. Looks like we'll need to uh, pick up more ammo, too. Assuming we can even get the weapon shop back up and running. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, actually. A mechanical eagle in a red, white, and blue top hat slumps on a rustic perch. Why, hello there! My name's Old Baldy, and this here is the Saul Buchanan Colorado Heritage Museum, or, as I like to call it, home. Me and my friends here are dedicated telling the story of old Saul Buchanan and the refounding of the great state of Colorado, which is just the first step in Saul's plan to bring back the good old United States of America. Now, just uh, stroll from stage to stage and we'll tell you the story along the way. That's as simple as that. Any questions before you go? Are you the American Eagle? Look just like my picture, don't I? Now, ah, wait a minute. Let me give you my good side. There you go. I got to admit, though, I'm looking better than I was. <laughs> Life's been pretty tough on old Baldy since the world went to pot. Lost a lot of feathers. But now that Patriarch Buchanan's rebuilding America, I'm starting to feel like my old self again. Yeah, I'll bet. Uh, tell us Buchanan's story. Well, I don't want to spoil the show, but it begins with Saul's humble start in this very town. And it follows the trials and tribulations he faced uniting the hundred families, defeating the monster army, and bringing peace and security to Colorado. And in case you were worried, it's suitable for children of all ages. Good to know. Hmm. Huh. Did Buchanan make this museum for himself? Saul Buchanan is far too modest for such egotistical shenanigans. No, sir, it was the hundred families who built this place, 
as a gracious thank you to the patriarch for all he's done for them. That's all we want to know. Thanks. Great! Then on with the show! I wonder... Ah, no. Looks like we can only use it in combat. All right, let's check this thing out. Well, the Dorseys thought they had a better idea. Believed they could rule by murder and fear. Tried to steal Colorado from our patriarch. But old Saul showed his bite was worse than his bark. Kicked out the Dorseys and gave their lands. To the poor and the needy and the Indians. No mercy for the merciless was his stand. So he hunted the Dorseys to the very last man. <laughs> you know what? I kind of love that. Yeah, we'll go check out the others. With the families behind him, Saul went to war and fought all the monsters of Satan's bazaar. He lined them all up and he cut them all down till Flab the Inhaler surrendered his crown. New cannon spared Flab and made him a deal. If your boys work for me, they'll never miss a meal. Flab signed him up on the dotted line. Now his monsters keep us safe in evening time. You know, uh, lyrics aside, that is actually pretty informative. I was wondering where the uh, monsters fit into all of this. The hundred families came to CEO Springs and all fell to fighting over frivolous things till Saul raised their heads to the circling wings of the vultures who were waiting to dine like kings. Saul said the only way to save the land was to bury the hatchet and all shake hands. So they all signed his treaty in a single day and begged him to lead them and show them the way. Hmm. Then came the gangs of the Eastern Plains, hoping to rob us of our worldly gains. Old Saw saw him coming and he rolled up his sleeves. He said, you all ain't nothing but a pack of thieves. Strong as an ox at three score and ten. He faced down the savages again and again, then drove them back to the desolate east and secured for Colorado an endless peace. You know, uh, I think I'm starting to see why they may have temporarily shut this place down. Hmm. Not sure what's going on with this container. Anyway, let's uh, have another look at this wiring, now that the thieves aren't in our way. Runs right into the wall here, possibly into that animatronic display. Let's give that another shot. Aha! Uh -huh. That triggered a perception check. Let's see what that gets us. Break 
for getting the power hooked back up to my microwave. I've got some real treats I couldn't sell without it. Power line must have gotten busted up in the fight. Let's. Stouffer's Select. The ancients really had this food thing figured out. Now with clam chowder. <laughs> Well, uh, logistics of a century-old frozen dinner aside, looks like that is basically just a more potent healing item. Not bad. All right, let's finish up that loop, and hopefully we can eke out enough experience points for one more level up here. Otherwise, we might have to do something crazy. More doggos. Troy's Diary. A small book with a bunch of dicks drawn on the cover, and the words Troy's Dairy don't fucking read. Someone with different handwriting has added one word. Moo. <laughs> I swear, half these junk items must just be the developers having fun. Place is closed. Rigo wants us to stand in the cold and make sure you know it. Ah, the infamous Farron Brigo. A veteran of the original wasteland. Can't wait to see what he's doing out here. Fat wreathes this marshal's face, and his belly tests the strength of his buttons and his belt. He shifts his unlit, half-smoked cigar to the corner of his mouth. I heard we had some new arrivals wash on in. Military types, they said. Can't really see the difference between you and the ordinary class of mercs. He chews on his cigar thoughtfully. Well, much as I'd love to shoot the shit with you tryhards. Sheriff Daisy said to let you go on in. So, go on. Give them Dorseys some hell. Marshal Lupinski, I expect you to moderate your language in the presence of a young lady. My apologies, Miss West. I meant no disrespect. Best of luck to you and your companions here. He reddens and touches the brim of his hat. What's behind this gate? It's the Garden of the Gods. Rocks, experimental farms, and now those fuck those Dorseys. Any idea how many Dorseys are in there? Nope. Gosh, thanks. No room for amateurs in this town. You hear? No room. Oh yeah? Then why are you here? Well, there's our exit to the Garden of the Gods. But for the purposes of the beta, it's also the point of no return. And we've still got stuff out here we haven't done yet. You have got to be kidding me. Alright, I was really hoping it wouldn't come to this, but... We've got rangers who are literally two points from hitting level four. Just, uh, bear with me.
the developers did sneak a pretty tough optional fight into the beta. I'm assuming it's tied into a mission for the full version of the game, but for our purposes, it's just what we need to gain some quick experience points. Okay, let's get this party started. Renee Dark's giving us a hard time here. Quan keeps trying to throw it through the roof. Almost. You know what? Oh, leave them! They don't even have brains! Why are humans always killing things? Friends, defend yourselves! Okay, let's try this again. Finally, geez. Level up. Oh good, Quan's trying to kill himself. Lula, please, um, cover the marshal. Okay, that takes care of about a third of them. Let's prep for the rest. Looks like that guy is smarter than the rest of the animatronics.
level up. Oof. Yeah, okay. Nice. Thank you, Lulalu. Half exposed, so let's go full defensive. Light hits on retcon. Nothing to worry about just yet. Going heavy. blood. Machine killing machine. Of course, it is worth noting that was about $200 worth of ammo and explosives. See if we can get lucky. Nope. Lucia has been blinded. Shoot, I was really hoping to have her flank. our last two grenades. Guess we might as well. Long way, moving up. There we go. All right, all in. Ha! 
Oh, so close. And level up. Man. <laughs> nice. That should uh, give us enough skill points to tie off some loose ends. So basically, we had a synth hiding among the animatronics. Again, curious to see where that goes in the full game. just feel bad. Alright, first stop, let's head for Taiwan. Oh, hold up. There we go. Plus six to crit chance. Not too shabby. Now let's take care of that mine. to take care of the dang bomb under my stall. Good news. We defused the mine. Really? That's great news. Here's a little something for you. I'm back in business. Welcome to the freshly reopened Taiwan Jones's Emporium. We have every fin you need. Just for the asking and, well, the paying. You didn't hear this from me, Franz, but word is there's still Dorseys all around the city waiting to jump innocents such as yourself. Be sure to stock up with me, yeah? Tell us about yourself. Ah, you want to hear about the wide open seas, my trusty vessel, the wild waves crashing the shores? Well, sorry chums, I'm just here to sell stuff. What would you like? What's with the, uh, ocean puns? I have no idea what you're talking about, Franz. So, uh, do you sell fish? Nope. No. Wish that I did, Franz. Born and raised in Colorado Springs. Me? I've never even seen a fish in my life. Wondrous creatures, I hear. Okay. Can we see your wares? Sardine leaf. Oh, boy, yeah, that is, uh, certainly a thing you said. <laughs> uh, the important thing here is that now that we have saved Taiwan, for better or worse, uh, we have access to a wide variety of new toys to play with, assuming we can actually scrounge up enough cash to afford them. At any rate, I think we'll hold off on making any purchases. At least until we've done one more pass through Ranger Headquarters. 
Speaking of which, um, let's hit the pause button for now, but we will pick up here next time. As we head back to headquarters, tie up a few last loose ends, and uh, make our final preparations for the siege on the Garden of the Gods. See you then. Get your Colorado Patriot here. Bye -bye. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Wasteland 3, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the fan-run Discord server, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on FIG. Links are in the description.